Hello, Monetization Nation. My guest today is Dave Jackson, who is an expert at launching, growing, and monetizing podcasts. He hosts the School of Podcasting podcast and wrote the book, Profit From Your Podcast. Today, Dave will share three of his key strategies to hosting a successful podcast. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan William, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. Today, I am joined by Dave Jackson. Dave began podcasting in 2005 and launched the School of Podcasting. His School of Podcasting show has more than 2.7 million downloads. He's helped hundreds of people plan, launch, and grow their podcast. He's the author of the book, Profit From Your Podcast, and is a featured speaker at events. In 2016, Dave joined Libsyn, which is the largest podcast hosting company. He's been inducted also into the Academy of Podcasters Hall of Fame. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dave. Oh, thanks for having me. Looking forward to this. So to start off, can you just tell us something that you are super passionate about? Well, podcasting would be one, uh, helping people, really. My background is in teaching. I uh, taught in the corporate world for about 20 years, a lot of Microsoft Office and QuickBooks and uh, time management and customer service and things like that. So anytime I can help people in one way or another, and I think that that comes from, I grew up kind of poor. And so there were plenty of times, I think, when I was on, the, kind of felt like the, the guy that was on the outside looking in. And so anytime I see somebody go, well, I'd like to start a podcast, but I don't know if anybody would listen to me. And I come here, sit down, let me show you the magic of podcasting or whatever it is. I think one of the, probably one of the more things that really, I just was like proud of is I would work with a guy once when I was doing the corporate thing and we had a program to help people get their GED. And you had people that had been out of high school for years and coming back going, Oh, uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. I haven't been in school for, you know, 20 years or whatever. And you just walk them through it. And eventually, you know, it's, it's funny when, how many times people have convinced themselves they're no good at math. Oh, math and I are not friends. And then you're like, no, let me show you. It's, it's not as hard as you think. And it's just a, once you get that attitude turned around, people can do anything. So I think that's right now. Uh, and, and it has been for years. I just like helping people. I love it. Tell me your story. Tell me your journey to become this master podcaster and master educator of podcasters? Yeah. So I was in, uh, again, I was training people and this goes back. Like I used to teach people how to surf the internet because they didn't know what it was. So, uh, and I was building websites with Microsoft front page. And the great thing about being a teacher is you get to help people all the time. The bad news is, is about every seven years, they hire a bunch of sales guys that can't sell training. And so instead of getting a new sales force, they downsize the training department. And so how I got into podcasting was I was doing a newsletter and I had a website for musicians about how to get more gigs and sell more CDs and grow your audience. It was all marketing. And uh, this one of my listeners just came back from this big event. He goes, and again, this dates it. He goes, you know how you missed the MySpace boat? And I go, yeah, yeah, don't, don't rub it in, you know? And he goes, well, I've seen the next big thing and it's podcasting. And I go, what's a podcasting, you know? And I Googled it and I thought I had broken the internet because there was one and a half pages of results. And I was like, I've never seen this. And I just typing it and typing it. And once I finally kind of pieces parted one together and I uploaded a file and, and fired up this old software and saw my file come down and the light bulb came on, I was like, oh, this could be huge. And so at the time I had decided to go back to school. My original degree was in electronic engineering and I was a technician, but I kind of fell into the training department. Well, now I went to get a job and they're like, wait, you don't have a teaching degree. You, you're, you're, you're an electrician. And I'm like, no, no, no. And so I had to go back to school to get my degree. And everybody at the time was saying membership sites are going to be the next huge thing. And podcasting is going to be the next huge thing. And I was like, well, I got some peanut butter and I got some chocolate. Let's see what happens if we put those together. So, uh, and it's funny because that's the thing I tell people because I really wanted money to, you know, buy books and keep me in my phone and all that other stuff. And when you are trying to make money now with your podcast and you don't have an audience, that's a little rough, which is why I was also doing guitar lessons, building websites, all sorts of other little side hustles as I uh, got that membership site off the ground. But uh, what really hooked me in 
was I was doing, I, I took that newsletter for musicians and I put it out as a podcast. And my very first piece of voicemail came from Michael Van Lahr in Nuremberg, Germany. And I remember I'm like, oh, I have an email. I'm like, oh, we attached something to it. And I click on it and I hear, hello, Dave, this is Michael Van Lahr from Nuremberg. And I was like, did he say Germany? My brother's standing behind me. And I was like, wait, hold on. And we just kept hitting play. And I'm like, wait, some guy on the other side of the planet found my podcast and he likes it. And I was like, oh, and, and for me, it scratches every itch I have. It's kind of geeky. Uh, you can be as creative as you want. I'm also a guitar player. So creativity is kind of in there. And then I get to help people. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. This is where I need to, to live with podcasting. So that's kind of when I decided, all right, we're going to launch the school of podcasting. And, and just, I, I just knew if I waited long enough, it, it would catch up. And over the years, it's been fun ever since then. Uh, it, it actually started in 2004. So technically I'm a little late. But every year I've seen the numbers just go up and up and up and more people listening and more people starting. We're just getting ready now to uh, to go over 2 million active podcasts in, uh, in Apple. So wow. it's, it's crazy. Yeah. How long did it take you doing that before you could do it full time and it would provide for you? Yeah, it's again, it's years because at the beginning it was ridiculous because you would take because you got to realize this is before smartphones. So like the iPod had just come out and you'd say, Hey, you know, I see you have a blog. You should turn that into a podcast. And I'm like, wait, I, I don't have an iPod. So you would spend five minutes explaining what a podcast was. And then they'd go, Oh yeah, I'm just a writer. I don't want to do that. So the first years were super lean, uh, but over, and that's where one of the things you find out is, is when you jump into your audience, find out what they need. So the people that I could talk into podcasting, they'd be like, oh, you know, this takes more time than I thought. Uh, do you know anybody that would edit this for me? And I was like, um, yeah, I do, me. And so I would charge them for that. So, and then I had people that said, well, I've, I've got this thing. And uh, if they weren't a member of my, you know, my membership site, they're like, do you know of anybody that could listen to my podcast and tell me if it's any good? And I'm like, yeah, me. So as I just kept going, my audience was giving me ideas of what they needed. And you're like, yeah, I can do that. How much would you pay for that? And so over the years, just these different little, it's usually not one stream of income. It's multiple streams of income. So probably around three years is when it was like, all right, this is, you know, this is getting pretty cool. And then uh, I was still at that time teaching. And I, uh, when that went away, I was like, okay, I can kind of float here on my own minus the health benefits. And so that's when I was like, huh. And then I thought, where could I, where would I want to work? If I, you know, cause I'm like, I don't want to go back to teaching in the corporate world. I'm like, I'd love to get a job in the podcasting world. And I'm like, well, where would I want to work? And I'm like, that would be Libsyn. And I knew uh, a guy that was the vice president there. Uh, I'd actually previously been hired by at the time, one of the, the largest events for new media. It was blog. It was called uh, the new media expo. It was blogging, YouTubing and podcasting. And I got hired there to be the head of the podcasting uh, arm. And how that happened is the guy that ran the event called Libsyn Blueberry, which is another media host and Spreaker. And all three uh, of those companies said, you know, who'd be a good guy for that? Dave Jackson. And so your podcast isn't in many cases, your business, it's your business card. It's what allows right. people to get to know you and without making a giant commercial. And so that had led to that. So I'd known uh, Libsyn from that point. I'd been a happy customer for 10 years and I just called them up and I said, I've got bad news and good news. And they're like, what's the bad news? And I'm like, well, kind of out of work at the moment. I got the, the school of podcasting thing going on, but uh, you know, and they, and he said, well, what's the good news? I said, I'm available to work for you. And so <laughs> it took him a while to figure out the Ohio to Pennsylvania tax stuff. And what's great about it is I'm kind of back in teaching right? It's, it's via email. I'm on their support team. So I'm teaching people via email. I get a tremendously wide view of what's going on in podcasting, which helps me make the school of podcasting better. Uh, and then I used to have to pay to go to all these great podcast events, podcast movement, podfest, all these other ones. Well, now I just go and I work the Libsyn booth. So granted, I'm, I'm tied to the Libsyn booth from, you know, eight to five, that's fine. That's again, makes it easy for people to find me. But really for me, the magic of all those events anyways, is the networking that you do at night. So it's really a win-win because some people go, Oh, it's, so you're really not doing this full time. And I'm like, well, kind of not really, but uh, you know, on the other hand, yes, I'm, I'm working in podcasting full time. 
And if for some reason, which I'm not, but if I, for some reason I ever left lips and I could fly on my own, but uh, I, it's one of those things where, you know, if you like your job, it doesn't really feel like work. So for me, it's the, the perfect fit. Again, scratches every itch I have. I get to help people. It's kind of technical and they're super creative on how they, they help their customers. So I'm super happy. Okay. Um, tell me about the biggest home run you've hit in your career your, for yourself or for one of your clients. Yeah. The one that I know we're on monetization and I should say that, but really the one that still makes me speechless is I had a guy because when I started, I had just gone through bankruptcy and a divorce. I was living in my brother's basement temporarily. So that's where I started. And I had a guy email me that said, Hey, I heard your, uh, your episode where you said sometimes starting a podcast can give you purpose. And he goes, I just want to let you know, he goes, my best friend of like 20 years had died suddenly. Um, I had lost my job that I loved after like, whatever, again, 20, 25 years. And I was pretty sure I had cancer. I was waiting for the doctor to call me back, but I had decided I was going to kill myself. He goes, uh, Halloween is my favorite hollow, uh, favorite holiday. And I was going to take my gun and blow my brains out. He goes, but I heard you say sometimes starting a podcast will give you a purpose. So I started a podcast and he goes, I just want to let you know, I don't want to kill myself anymore. Oh, and wow. it's hard to make me speechless, but I was just like, look, I'm just a guy in the basement next to the water heater talking about podcasting. I didn't expect anything like that. So that would be one that sticks out in my head, but I've, I've been hired uh, three times now because of my podcast. I was hired at a local college for a while. And, and during the, the uh, interview, they're like, what are your hobbies? And I'm like, oh, I do podcasting. They're like, wait, you, you know about podcasting? Cause this was in like probably 2010 ish. And so they brought me in under the idea of we might make a podcast on how to be a better student. Uh, but I was, again, doing teaching and things like that. I got hired by the New Media Expo, and then I got hired by Libsyn. And then multiple speaking engagements and things like that. So, again, it's a great business card for that. So those are the ones that – and every time you do that, it's an opportunity to, again, show people that you know what you're talking about, which then leads to more opportunities, which then – leads to more opportunity. So it's just a matter of, you know, continuing to show up and deliver value. What's the biggest mistake or failure that you've seen either yourself or with one of your clients related to podcasting? I think trying to be everything to everyone, the whole, I'm going to do a show about with, I'm going to interview interesting people and have them tell their interesting stories. Okay. What's, what's, going to make your show different than the other, I don't know, 2000 shows that are doing the same thing. And they're like, well, um, and it's always the answer is, well, me, you know, it's my personality. Great. Okay. What's the goal of your show? Well, I'd like to get sponsorships. Okay. <laughs> so you don't have a niche, you know, I can't sell motivation in a can. There's nothing like a running show where I can sell shoes. It's inspirational stories. And I'm like, there's nothing, unless you're a life coach, like what really ties into that? And so you didn't bring an audience. You don't have a product. The goal is to get a bunch of downloads so you can get a sponsor. And sponsorship is really not, it, it doesn't work for about 90% of podcasts because it's this generic kind of wide ranging, not very niche show, which means you're going to have to have a ton of downloads and less than 10% get the 5,000 downloads. And that's the minimum number of downloads you need per episode, not per month, per episode to get any kind of sponsor, unless you're hyper niche. So now if I'm talking to triathletes and there's a product specifically designed for triathletes, okay, now you can have less, you can have smaller numbers because you have that person's target audience. I had a client of mine and she did a show called Special Mouse and she had a son that was pretty high on the autism spectrum. And she loved Disney. So she did a show about how to take people with special needs to amusement parks. And she didn't even have a thousand downloads an episode. And yet she got a sponsor. Why? Because there was somebody in Florida that specialized in what? You guessed it, transporting people with special needs. So you don't have to have a ton of listeners if you have a hyper niche show. You know, on our show, we, t we use uh, tectonic shifts as the vehicle to teach people how to increase their monetization. So think of a tectonic shift in 
in geology where two tectonic plates move against each other and they can cause massive destruction like earthquakes or volcanic eruptions, but they also can cause massive growth like mountain formation. And the same thing happens in business. We're constantly uh, in the middle of tectonic shifts that are reshaping the business landscape. What do you think are the biggest tectonic shifts that we are going through today? One of them is it's so easy to start a podcast. It's like I could burp into my phone right now and it would be an Apple next week. And that's not an exaggeration. It's really that easy. And so that's something that 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was, that's why the original like wave of podcasters were all about technology and being a geek and, you know, the internet, because those are the only people that could figure it out. And now there are tools that are made, like I have in my hand, I'm holding a little recorder that about five years ago would have cost about a thousand dollars. It's 200 bucks. It's the size of a checkbook. And I can do so much stuff with this. It's amazing. So as the, the pool of podcasters has gotten bigger, uh, more and more technology has been made specifically for that audience. So that's a shift that we just didn't see years ago. That's it's just making it easy. That's the good news. The bad news is nobody's answering those questions that I always ask. Who is this for? Why are you doing this? How are you going to be different than the other people? You know, and a lot of times podcasters are, nobody believes this, but behind the scenes, I'm a little shy. So we're a little introverted. And you have to, one of the things that's going to set this apart that is going to make it different is you have to share a little bit about you if you really want people to connect with you. And that doesn't mean you're like, hey, welcome to my show. Today, I'm going to talk about French toast recipes and wait till you hear what my cat did on the carpet. No, but if you can share stories about your life that help extenuate whatever point you're trying to make, you do two things. You make your point and you allow your audience to get to know you. And now you start to build that relationship. I always say when you do a solo show, number one, do not follow the advice of a YouTuber and start off with, hey, guys. No, because nobody's listening to a podcast in a car. And if they are, they're probably by themselves. 80% of people drive to work alone. So this yeah. whole, hey, guys. And when you say thank you so much for tuning in, I'm so glad you're here. I have people tell me all the time when I can meet them in person. They're like, I always kind of feel like you're talking to me. And I always say it's because I am. I talk to one person when I do a podcast. And then if I do uh, an interview, that grows your network. So people a lot of times are like, well, do I do a solo show or an interview show? And I go, do both. There's, it's, that's the beautiful thing about podcasting is it's your show. If you want to make it five minutes, five hours, two seconds, 20 hours, whatever it is, it's yours. If you want it to be funny or serious or, you know, whatever, it's yours. Uh, Aisha Tyler is an actress director. She was on The View for a while and she had a podcast and she did a, uh, a keynote at Podcast Movement. And she said, you know, one of the coolest things about my podcast, and she goes, I can't say this about many things. And she goes, it's mine. She goes, people ask me like, why do you edit your podcast? Why don't you pay somebody to do that? And she goes, I upload it. She goes, I do the artwork. She goes, everything. She goes, because it's mine. It's not my husband's. I don't share it with a bank. It's mine. And that's really one of the cool things about it. So I think right now that's the, one of the biggest shifts is just being able to actually create a podcast is just so incredibly easier than it was even five years ago. Yeah. That's the good news. So the, I always say the good news is anybody can start a podcast. The bad news is anybody, anybody can start, can start a podcast. podcast. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about your book, uh, profit from your podcast. Um, what do you think are the most effective ways to monetize a podcast today? Most, the easiest one is the one that makes the most money is selling your own product because everybody loves to jump on sponsorship because we think it's radio. But when you can make a product that custom made for your audience that they can't get any place else, that's, you can charge more for that. So whether that's a membership site, a course, consulting, a book, whatever it is, because I'll give you an example. Uh, a friend of mine, Daniel J. Lewis, does a podcast called The Audacity to Podcast. Well, Daniel was a web designer, and he charged a pretty penny to make a really pretty website. His 
show was called the audacity to podcast because it was supposed to be like the courage to podcast but he knew it was a play on the name audacity which is a really popular free software so yeah. here's daniel ready to charge people a couple thousand dollars for a website and he attracts an audience that loves free stuff so he was like huh this is not going to work so but he had a really decent audience so he looked at them as like what do they need well they were all like, oh, I want to get more reviews. I, I, I want to check my reviews. So he made a tool to where you can check all your reviews from all the different countries in one place. They were trying to get up the charts of Apple Podcasts. So he created a course on uh, SEO for podcasters and all sorts of fun stuff. That he, And it was a matter of like, okay, I've got this audience. They don't want what I have, but let me figure out what they want and then just build it or pay somebody to build it for me. And because they because you deliver value, uh, hopefully you are podcasting on some sort of schedule that is, you know, people can count on whether it's every week or every two weeks or every month or whatever. They're like, Hey, there's Dave. He's there every whatever week. So they, they trust you because you're consistent. They like you because you deliver value. And if you shared a little bit about yourself while you're doing this, they like you. So there's the old no like, and trust. And you say, Oh, by the way, I have this new tool that does exactly what you're talking about. They're going to buy it. So that's really for me, the number one way, the number two one that I've seen work is affiliate marketing. So if you don't have your stuff to sell, the right product with the right audience can bring in some decent cash as well. I, uh, I'm a big fan of the biggest loser when it was on TV. And one of the coaches is Jillian Michaels and Jillian Michaels had this cool radio show. She had left the biggest loser and she was doing a radio show that they put out as a podcast. Well, then she went back to the biggest loser and so everybody was like, well, where's the Jillian Michaels podcast? It went away. So I was like, well, they're looking for a Jillian Michaels podcast. Let's make one. So I made a Jillian Michaels podcast and I would talk <laughs> about Jillian and what she was doing. And God bless her. She put her name on everything and everything had an affiliate uh, program with it. And my favorite was she came out with a new audio book and it was the first time she'd ever read her own audio book. And every time somebody bought one, I got 15 bucks from audible. And so you know, I said, and I said, hey, you can get this book for free. It's the first time Jillian's ever, you know, uh, read her own book and cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. So you end up with a nice four-figure affiliate check for that. So, uh, and then she she left The Biggest Loser and came back and shocking that uh, nobody, if you have a choice of listening to the actual Jillian Michaels or some weird guy in Ohio talking about Jillian Michaels, they, they actually chose the real Jillian Michaels. So that was the end of that show, but it was a nice affiliate check while it was, uh, while it was working. Thank you so much, Dave, for sharing your stories and insights with us today. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, our podcast isn't just our business. It can also be our business card. Number two, if we want to host a successful podcast, we need to focus on a specific niche audience. We don't have to have thousands of listeners to be successful if we can really narrow down our target audience and serve them well. Number three, in our podcasts, we should get personal. There are millions of podcasts out there, so we need to find out what makes us unique and share it so our listeners will choose us. Number four, we can share stories about our life to help get our point across and to allow our audience to get to know us and connect with us. Number five, we should talk to one person when we talk in a podcast. This means referencing our listeners as you instead of referencing a group of people. If you want to learn more about or connect with Dave, you can find him on LinkedIn or listen to his podcasts, School of Podcasting or Profit from Your Podcast. And there's links to those sites in the blog post for this episode at monetizationnation.com. Do you want to be a better digital monetizer? Then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, you can get a free passion marketing ebook and learn how to be a top priority of your ideal customers at passionmarketing.com. Number two, you can subscribe to the free Monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number three, you can subscribe to the Monetization Nation YouTube channel. Number four, you can subscribe to the Monetization Nation podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or Stitcher. Number five, you can follow Monetization Nation on Instagram and Twitter. Do you have a podcast? If so, what strategies have helped you to find success? please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success on your podcast. 
Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.